Hello everyone, it's me again, Xeno, I'm in the Chantry again and this is another video about, of course, our favorite upcoming uh, vampire game, Bloodlines 2. Yeah, uh, TCR, the Chinese room, uh, had a little break in posting dev diaries, of course they were uh, working very hard on the game itself the entire time but they had a little break from this posting dev diaries and today like uh, i don't know uh, three hours ago it dropped dev diary 15 dialogue choice systems and we will do a little bit of change this time uh, in, in my usual format of these videos. Mainly I will read the most important part of this dev diary. If you want to read it yourself of course you can, uh, I will put the link in the description below and then we will uh, rewatch the dialogue from gameplay that was posted a few months back and compare how it changed, how uh, what the dev diary says, how they worked on this, and how it used to look like back when the uh, gameplay gameplay was revealed. We also will revisit the sneak peek from I think it was like 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 January maybe, of course. All links to the gameplay, to the interview and to this dev diary in the description. So, well, let's do it. We'll see how it works, how it how it will work out. Dev diary 15 dialogue choice systems. Uh, I will skip this part because it's just hello, we're back and we will have we have more info for you and that there are minor spoilers. So before we actually start, there will be minor spoilers to the game. For those of you who are very sensitive about spoilers, you can go read yourself or just skip it or I don't know. Let's read the actually interesting part. The presentation of dialogue options is different in Bloodlines 2. A lot of it stems from TCR's, the Chinese room's, legacy of celebrating fully realized characterization and empowering voice actors to do more heavy lifting and explore more nuisance. That's a good thing, in my opinion. To give an example, when selecting a dialogue option, players should know exactly what they're opting into. We've all known the frustration of, but that's not what I thought that meant. Like in a certain game with a number four. It's a good game, but... Yeah. But the kind of spelling out this requires precludes the ability to lean into the strength of actors. Okay. This would also have caused problems for UI, since Fire, our protagonist, often has more to say than can be reasonably, reasonably uh, presented on screen, and that makes sense. Especially when we're also catering to console. Ultimately, the needs of the player were integral. Players should have all the information they need about their selected option and should feel confident in their choice while the actor is allowed more playfulness in following the directive. That directive. Following that directive. That makes sense. Now, seeing as you're reading a dev diary, I assume that means you've seen some game pl game materials that we have already shared. We will show it later. 
we'll jump to it later and discuss that uh, already shared which means you'll have noticed an early result of the above of the above dilemma we init initially toyed with representing our dialogue choices in summary to make the intention of the branch abundantly clear and lean harder into all our strategic approach to roleplay. More on that shortly. We will read that. However, this quickly revealed itself as the wrong direction. And not just because you guys rightly said so, so, well, most of the games community. Getting into the weeds of our conversations, I found that the choices on offer felt semi when viewed from above even when the content was entirely different. Zoom too far out and you'll lose fine detail, which is where your flavor lives. Yeah. So we settled on a compromise, the tried and true next best thing, carefully paraphrased speech. So what we can get from this. What do we know from what we just read? Uh, actually, this will be a good moment to revisit the videos. Give me a second. Yeah, uh, we will revisit the gameplay, the official gameplay reveal. I skip to the dialogue part, so... It's you. The Nomad. Yeah. Willem, I take it. You had some interesting guests outside. Expecting trouble? That depends. Why... why... why are you here? Tolly tells me you keep the court's secrets and its histories. Dialogue goes on. Earlier goes tonight, on. another kindred by the name of Isabella used this mark to sap my power. Do you know anything about it? No, 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 no. All I had to do was keep my head down for just a few more nights. He's hiding something. And here we have the choices shown. Uh, so yeah, this is very F4, if you know, then you know, uh, style of dialogue. You have just a phrase and then you don't really know what fire will say something along those lines in the in this style like show concern for his well-being what will she say something revealing that she's concerned about his well-being we don't know what maybe he won't like it maybe it will be rude in a way so this is well I'm not a fan of that. So, it's not bad. It is one way to do it. But, uh, as we can read in the new Dev Diary, this will be changed in a way that uh, it won't be like this. The entire thing that Fire will say will be summarized. Not like here, but like a short sentence perhaps of course putting everything that she would say uh, in a box would be pointless because it's too much would be too much to put on a screen because you know when you choose a dialogue option it can be long your response can be long and not like uh, i will shoot you so don't move and then something 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 so, the way the Dev Diary presents it, uh, the new Dev Diary, that it will be more revealing, in a way, uh, more about our intentions will be revealed, more of what we actually will say will be seen, so we can make the right decision of how do we want to play, what do we want to actually say, how we want to respond to a situation, to a, a threat, or a flirt, maybe, perhaps. I want to romance Lou, please. And Elif, of course. 
Yes, please, uh, Elif, when, uh, where, please, put Elif in the game, I beg of you. So, uh, that's that here. And let's now see this, the same thing here, the narrative and RPG stream, uh, the sneak peek reveal of Bloodlines 2 from nine months ago. She didn't murder you. Yeah, it's a po post alpha footage. You can see what it says that in the, in the place where my face is. So that's a start. So then. You have me at a disadvantage. I assume, of course, that you know who I am. So the question is, who are you? You can call me Fire. I seek an audience with the Prince of Seattle. I've been led to believe you can help. This is an, uh, an old, older footage, uh, post-alpha. So very, very old. Like, like I said, the nine months ago, the, the gameplay uh, reveal here is newer, only six months ago was it posted. So if someone will complain that oh this game looks like this, uh, this was a sneak peek reveal, this is most up to date that we have right now. The gameplay reveal actually, the actual gameplay. And I'm just showing this to show you the difference. How delicious! Whatever could you possibly want with our beloved prince? That's my business. Now, now, Fire, that is not a fair exchange. You came to me, after all. Do try and play along, darling. It's so boring otherwise. Let's try again. Who are you, really? And here we have something similar, uh, like here, but you know, in a different configuration. This says more than this. Here we have a three word sentence, like, tell her everything, reveal the mark, assert your status. We don't know what it will do, it's just uh, what you will do now. Just a, a simple choice and how it will impact anything, we don't know. Here we actually know kinda what will happen. Uh, show concern for his well-being, then outcome will probably will be more positive than remind him who you are, because it's obviously a threat. And the most current version that we didn't see yet, but the Dev Diary shows us that, tells us actually, uh, that it will be revealing more. Our dialogue will be laid out before us, in a summarized sentences that we will choose and it will give us more insight into what we actually will say and perhaps how it will impact the conversation. So that's interesting. Now that I look at this sneak peek in the gameplay, the game had a long journey. This version of the game, of course. But let's continue here. Someone rudely awoken from a hundred years sleep, covered in thin blood vitae, with this mark on my hand, and no explanation why. I want answers. Well, if that's all you wanted, why didn't you just say? So that's it? You'll help? That's the here. And dialogue here. Remind Tell me, Willem. What rumors have you heard about me? That you were there in Cairo. Once again, we kinda know in this version of the dialogue system, we kinda know what the f what Fire will say, but it's still a little unclear. In the uh, in here, we can see. Uh, we can see it here, paraphrased speech. So uh, what we will say, put in a shorter version, not just summarized uh, and described, but actually kinda what we will say. And that's a step in good direction. I saw a lot of people on the Bloodlines to Discord server actually being happy about the change. I also am happy about the change. 
Uh, because, well, it's a, a better way than what was shown before. It, what was shown before wasn't a bad, per se, but I understand why people disliked it, especially in a game like uh, anything related to Vampire the Masquerade. Swan Song actually did it really cool, but you know the game was entirely based on a uh, narrative. Uh, what else do we have here? But what about the con content of these choices? So what actually will be paraphrased? Remember what I said about strategies? Yes, we do. The best way to approach choice design is to look at your theme. In Bloodlines 1 your options are mixture of strategy, humanity, with other options thrown into honor, for example, your clan. That makes sense. The same is true in other titles. In Baldur's Gate 3, uh, choice options are themed roughly around a simplified version of the morality alignment scene in D&D. In Telltale's The Walking Dead, they are themed around the central question of do you have to be cruel to survive? That's th Those are very good examples. Very good examples. VTM's World of Darkness is so named for its cynical perspective. Its blood-tainted glasses, if you will. Kindred are a natural extension, a metaphor of that worldview. The recurring motive is typically how can I get what I want? Makes sense. With little being left off the table, though with room enough for those fading echoes of humanity to cling on, or at least appear to do so. In this way, Bloodlines 1's approach of marrying strategy with morality is the ideal direction and it's the one we've chosen. So, not like in the game with 4, you know what I'm talking about, you, you have to know. Uh, so they are going more uh, in the direction of first bloodlines. So that's the way the speech will be paraphrased, yeah. But the thing in Bloodline Swan was that our protagonist didn't speak, it, they didn't have a voice. We were mute character and we can just imagine that we speak the things we choose. Here fire has a voice, makes sense. So here it will be kind of like in Bloodline Swan, you see what you say, what you see what you will say, what fire will say, the things you choose, but you will actually hear the extension of, of it. You will know what fire will say almost exactly, and you will know how it will impact the conversation. And, well, fire will add some sentences to it, but still keeping the whole talking, the whole uh, response in the spirit of your choice, of the phrase you have chosen from the box. So, that's good. That's very good. At least that's how I think it will turn out. We have to wait and see for more, more gameplay. Perhaps soon. Let's continue reading. But what does that mean for division of choice in more concrete terms? In other words, words, what courses of action might an elder vampire such as fire consider? That's actually also an important part to what we will, uh, what will our options will be, what our options will be. Because, well, fire isn't a fledgling, like in Bloodlines 1. They have a very little to do with actual humanity. Because, well, you know, after three or four hundred years, you really start to 
be more vampire than human. Not an animal running and biting everyone, but you know, you're getting colder and I think Fabian will be a balancing factor in this situation, but let's read here. The first and most obvious is to lean into their status, age, potency and power to intimidate those around them. In other contexts, this can manifest as being willing to voice the unpopular opinion and being direct about it, like me praising Bloodlines 2 from the start. Not beating around the bush, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. After all, nobody Fs with an elder, right? Right? Maybe. So this will also impact our choices. The fact that fire is in a way a set character, the way their previous experiences impacted them, the way they see the world, so to speak. Because in Bloodlines 1 we were a fledgling, you didn't know crap about vampire world. Here fire is experience, they know what they're doing. Kinda. And they will uh, act in the way that they know, being a vampire elder and an undead powerful being with authority, with power. But once again, that just, that is just me speculating based on the things that we read here. But what if they do? What if after a century in Torpor your your age is all that's going for you? Well, age counts a lot, especially for a vampire. True, but being kindred is about more than what's supernaturally afforded to you. And a clever vampire will have more up their sleeve than what their abilities allow. Other ways of exerting control. That's very important in vampire society. After all, bloodlines without some political scheming and intrigue just wouldn't be bloodlines, and that's true. And that doesn't even account for fire's unique and, well, unfortunate circumstances. Picture, if you will, the eyes looking to the side emoji. Yeah. Throwing your weight around isn't always the best option, especially in a world overrun with big egos and at least 13 different species of narcissists. That's a good one. Well, mainly Toradors, Ventru, La Sombra, Simitsi. That most Banu Hakim also, I guess, and some other choices, but well, uh, sometimes the best way to deal with someone is to let them take a W, take take a win, if you don't know. For now, stroke their pride, affirm their delusions, Malkavians. whisper honeyed lies, and fall under the radar of capability. Become the listening ear, the comforting shoulder, the trusted disciple. Such a strategy can take you far, assuming your victim buys it. Another great summary of what vampires are actually. You need to lie to survive. If you just go and tell the truth and you're not useful in other way, well, you're you're done. And that's a very interesting approach in a game, so the choices and the impact of those choices will have a deep effect on the world, on the NPCs that we interact with. And that will be said also here in a second. Two ways to play the game, two extremes. So what occupies the middle ground? Important question. Let's see. 
A shrewd kindred may know better than to bet it all on a big play. Knowledge is power, both others' knowledge of you and your knowledge of them. Better sometimes to remain a mystery to let others show their hand. That's true. Perhaps you achieve this straightforwardly by responding to questions with more questions, or, indir or indirectly by choosing words that might provoke a reply. A telling outburst. Well, by scooting back from the table, flipping the board and laying the game bare. If social navigation among kindred is a careful masquerade, uh, uh, what happens when you rip off another's mask and expose the subtext? Say, with perceptive observations. That's another layer to this delicious cake that's, that they're cooking here. Oh, there's a lot here. Let's continue. Of course, your options are not always strictly limited to these three approaches. We haven't forgotten about clan specific options, for instance. So, Bruja will have little different options. They let's say Banu Hakim and or Tremir and Ventru and other clans in DLCs. And how each approach manifests will not always be uniform. You may also be sitting here wondering where humanity factors in. Okay. Now we're now we're cooking here. The beauty of this system lies in subjective interpretation. Unless clearly indicated, we will never assume the intent of your choice on your behalf. Perhaps you were battling up low Graham, uh, so your treachery wouldn't go unnoticed. But perhaps you generally admire her, well, who wouldn't? Perhaps you wanted to make sure the young prince understood the hierarchy so they wouldn't mess with your plans. Or perhaps they were simply getting on your nerves. Strategy or sincerity. That much is up to you. And that's great. That's a choice. And choices are good. But of course, that won't stop other characters from having their own interpretation. So they're alive, in a way, the undead, in a way. Conversations are not an exception to gameplay, but an extension of it. And if gameplay is a test of skill, conversations are a test of emotional intelligence. To that end, each of our characters in Bloodlines 2 has their own preferences and biases rooted firmly in who they are and what drives them, which, combined with your choices, determines and flavors their opinion of you. This is a little more in-depth than like or dislike, to give a few simplistic and unrepresentative examples. No spoilers. Yeah. Perhaps the compliment that so pleased the pr primogen uh, come across as sarcasm to the Finblood, perhaps. Perhaps to the Bruja your bullying was a blush of life. So you see, reactions to your choices are not uniform, but unique to the NPC and their unique disposition. And you'll have to put some work into figuring out what makes them tick. Another layer. This is getting better and better. I re really, really like it. Here we have a script of a dialogue uh, that is scribed here. 
so let's go here. Above is a screenshot from our Inky editor showing how player choice influences perception and relationship in aggregate. So this, you, have, you can pause the video and read this or just go to the actual dev diary on their website. In the top choice, fire protests lose intrusion on a private meeting and if Low is not used to this used to this behavior from fire, she will be slightly taken aback, responding with someone's touchy tonight, before rejoining the brand that, branch that everyone else who took this option will see. My child and I have no secrets, do we darling? So we build actual relationships with NPCs like Lou, for example. We can create impressions on them and they will react appropriately to our behavior then, when they actually create uh, their opinion on us. That's good. Regardless, choosing this option will adversely affect Lou's opinion of fire, indicated by low dislike that like in Telltale Games, which over time can layer with her perception that Fire is a bully, an empath or a sage. RF unimpressed represents the nature of her displeasure, which fits the UI players will see. We will see this in a moment on the screenshots with the gorgeous Lou. In the second, softer choice option, welcome, loose interpretation of Fire's response is again distorted by her existing perception of who Fire is, which in turn affects whether her opinion of Fire goes up or down. But like they said before, in, it's not simply like this, like one or two, one zero, it's, it's not like that. If she's used to you being aggressive, but here you choose the softer route, she will assume you're being sarcastic and become annoyed, lowering her opinion. After all, Lou is fluent in sarcasm. Well, she's most likely a Torian or a Venture, so yeah, that makes sense. So it's not stretch that she would project this into others. Yeah, and he will we see Lou. However, if you're not usually aggressive, then she'll take you at your word and respond favorably with her opinion rising in tandem. In this branch, there is no mere player either say, well, that's, there's no need for sarcasm or and it's in part thanks to you. So we are uh, like here, shown, and he, here we have Lou, my Lord Tremere, hold me here. She's gorgeous. If Elif is in the game, I already know she will look stunning and I want a body pillow. Please. I will buy it. Chinese room? Come on. Paradox? Come on. Bloodlines 2 body pillows. Let's go. As we can see here, we have conversation with Lou. If, like was said above, uh, well, there's no need for sarcasm and in the top right corner, Lou was in irritated by that and below we have Lou was pleased by that. Like in Telltale games, uh, Xeno will remember this. If you do something, if you disrespect my gargoyles, then I will remember this and turn you into a gargoyle, so better don't. Yay. And to finish this, two variations of Lou reacting to the above scene, depending on if you irritate or please her. So this right here. She looks amazing. Oh my. Oh my Tremere. But this is also accumulative. If you have always come across as weak, for better or worse, sudden strength could have its own unique response. 
The same goes if you have a reputation of directness or for keeping your cards close to your chest. Things like your clan and the details of your legend color how others see you. And your outfits will also impact the uh, interactions. Uh, as well as the color of the lens through which they filter their reality. But so do your actions over time. And let's not forget contexts and situational factors. What worked once won't necessarily work every time. We don't want you getting complacent, picking options transactionally to fill up some bar or progress some metric. We want you thinking and engaging from moment to moment, as a kindred would. The Chinese room senior narrative designer and writer Sarah Longthorn. Great Dev Diary, Miss Longton. Good stuff. And here we have a teaser, perhaps, of what will come next. Uh, so, in two weeks, we will have a Dev Diary on Camarilla. Perhaps I will do a video on, on these two. Then, uh, September 11th, Anarchs. And September 25th, uh, World Building how the world will be impacted by us, our choices and other things. So this was a very cool dev diary. Let's uh, stop here to look at Miss Lou. It was very interesting. We analyzed how things have changed for the social aspect of the game. Uh, we compared it to the previous iterations of it, from the post-alpha, the gameplay reveal, and now. But until we see actually more gameplay, we can speculate, but things described and told here are very promising. I'm happy it's progressing in this direction, because it will allow us to well, roll, have more role-playing experience. I'm very excited. Let me know what you guys think about this, about Lou, about where is Elif. Come on, please, Elif, again. And that's it for this video. I'm excited for the next Dev Diaries. The game is progressing. We're getting closer and cro closer to the release date, to actually getting a release date well it is set for fall this year so october perhaps it will be cool to actually have this on halloween i will take a week off and do vampire stuff like i always do so again thanks for watching share your opinions in the comments below and once again links to the dev diaries the gameplay reveal and the sneak peeks uh, will be in the description so thanks and see ya